60% of the time, it works every time. <laughs> Hey everybody, John Grimsmo here. Welcome to the shop. We got an epic project video for you guys today. So the Swiss lathe can pump out parts so fast that sometimes I don't catch them fast enough if I'm trying to uh, do measurements, do quality control on them. So they'll be like two or four or 10 or 20 in the bucket before I've gotten a chance to come back and measure them. And when there's so many in a bucket, I don't know which one's the first one or the last one. And that information is really valuable for dialing in the tolerances and getting everything like perfect. So we used to have this bucket that would catch all the parts uh, and it was fine, but I needed a better solution. And my buddy Marcus reached out and said, hey, I've started a design company and do you need anything? And I was like, ding, yes, perfect, let's do this. So I drew this all up, uh, just the tray infusion, sent it to him and he took it from there. And the solution he came up with was pretty epic. So stay tuned, enjoy, and this is gonna be fun. Marcus, John. welcome. Thanks for having me. Welcome to the shop. So you have some toys for me, huh? Yes, for Okay, sure. I want to see this thing. Sure. This is very pretty. Very pretty. You I did killed it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like literally, I just sent you this yeah, and good. told you this and you came up with your own design. Yeah, I love it. It, um, it kind of came together pretty easily. It's just a lot of extrusions and, and a big plate basically that holds everything together. So. Um, pretty straightforward. A lot of filing and sanding. I don't have a, a milling machine yet, so it was a lot of... Uh, <laughs> so how did you end up making work. the brackets and all the drilling and stuff? Um, so I just ordered these plates, uh, cut on the bandsaw, a lot of hand sanding oh, wow, and yeah. so on, and then I've got a drill, drill press, so I just drill everything up. And That's awesome. Bolts it all together. It's pretty easy. See, I would have spent like 10 hours, to, you know, CAD designing it. And, yeah, yeah. And uh, CNC machining it and stuff. and. Yeah, scrap the first I, two and then make I more. I sort of thought maybe if you wanted to CNC some stuff, but you know what, for what it is, it's, uh, it came out all right. So yeah, exactly. Right. Means to an end. Yeah. Uh, I love it. So what are these again? So these are uh, bearing mounts. So these hold, uh, basically, you might be able to see on the very inside there, um, very common, like 608 bearings. Yep. And so they just hold them sort of tangential Like a here. skateboard bearing? Like or? A skateboard okay, bearing. yeah. And yeah. so it just uh, supports all the outside. Um, there's five of them spaced around to hold up because these are going to be loaded with those your, your parts um, densely. It, you know, it could be filled with stuff and it could be off balance as well. Yeah. Um, so anything that's just holding it along the outside, you put quite a bit of uh, Love weight it. on it's, there. It's, it's very smooth. Smooth uh, turning. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Everything's clocked in place. And I did think about doing some sort of belt drive or something with the motor offset and, and everything, but um, it was just sort of unnecessary. So. Direct drive and right underneath. This is so cool. <laughs> when I was at, I think we have some footage of this. When I was at 20, uh, IMTS 2016, I saw a Citizen lathe that had something like this, and like it would air suction the part out of the machine and dump it into one of these. And I was like, that's the coolest thing ever. And I've been crunching that idea now for almost three years, and uh, super excited. Yeah, and like, yeah. you reached out and you was like, hey, remember me? <laughs> we hung out a couple of months, a couple of years ago. And I've got my own design company now. Definitely. Do you have any ideas? And I was like, boom, <laughs> let's do this. Yeah. You got a bunch right off the bat. Yeah, yeah exactly. Multiple and it's more stuff uh, well, like, as, in the pipeline. So. As we're growing this company, there's so much stuff I want to do. Yeah, and we exactly. can only do so much. For sure. And it's awesome to be able to leverage um, you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. And I think a lot of companies are like that. They want to do some stuff, not really sure how to right, promote right. that. Um, so just you know, to be able to call someone up and say, hey, I want to do this. Yeah. Go for it, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, it still takes like an hour to outline the project and yeah, like for sure. come up with this stuff, but then all the hours that you put in also, I didn't have to, yeah, and I could pay you for that, and I was happy to do that. Exactly. So it works, money. it works, <laughs> yeah. This is sick. Yeah, very straightforward. So it's just that stepper motor, there's an Arduino, and then a, uh, a stepper motor driver on there. Okay. Um, yeah, if you want to sort of tip it. And just some simple wiring, so uh, an eight position rotary switch. Uh, into the shield there, and then there's a cable here, which plugs into this um, current switch. So oh, nice! It just we're plugs in. Wrapping this around, or sending the, the wire through there, uh, and every time the conveyor motor goes on, it's going to trigger this to count the part in the bin. And when it gets to whatever we set it to, uh, it's going to rotate that, you know, one tenth of a revolution. And, and I was reading your epic like document, oh, your yeah. build <laughs> document, and you already figured out that 
the conveyor turns on for like 45 seconds. So you need yeah, a exactly. signal, not a constant, not a constant AC yeah. Uh, yeah, cause pulse. Yeah, you get it flipping 60 times a second there. Exactly, exactly. So it would count 60 parts a second. So yeah. uh, a little bit of coding work into that. And, and so now we're gonna, when we plug it in and we'll do a little bit of calibration and I'm gonna plug it right into the computer and we can take a look at what it's doing and see how awesome. it's doing. All right, let's bolt it up. Let's see what this thing does. So as much as I am Mr. Precision Measurement, uh, I had to eyeball a lot of this stuff and like literally use a tape measure and send him pictures. Just because I'm, it's weird measuring bigger things like this. Um, but I think you made it adjustable enough that uh, we should be golden here. Yeah, lots of slots and um, the extrusions make it really, really easy to- Already it's looking, it's looking that. good. Looking good, yeah. And you, with the extrusions you said you can move it in and out. Yeah, That's exactly. a clever design. Yeah, just from those pictures and, and measurements that you gave, so I modeled out the chute itself and yeah. then the bracket and a little bit of the sort of the housing here, uh, just to make sure I wasn't hitting anything. And you can actually use the switch properly. <laughs> My evil plan is coming together. And it seems to be adjusted left to right just fine. I don't know how you're clocking this. Looks all right. So the way that it works is that it's going to turn the stepper motor on every time it moves and then shut it off. Okay. So it's you're like you're able to move this because I figure there's mm. going to be a lot of sort of manual okay. when you when you want to mess with is it. Is there a hold? If you want to change that, we can, can uh, code it to hold. Okay, yeah. yeah. Or leave it on all the time so it's kind of tight and, or something. Not, yeah, because I figured if anybody bumps it. Yeah, it I don't it. don't want that really. Yeah, exactly. So, but yeah, that's easy stuff to play sure with, that, right? Yeah, we can make sure that that works. This is cool. So I've uh, always wanted to play with Arduinos. I bought a Raspberry Pi and kind of gave it to Sky and said, you figure it out. Um, and it's awesome to be able to have somebody who can like, I can just give them the vision, the idea, and I'm like, you can use an Arduino for that, right? There's, it'll work. And you're like, yeah, I got it. I can figure it out. Yeah. And it's, it's coding and programming just like G-code, just like everything else. Okay. Yeah, so that's the wiring. It's, the machine's off right now, so it's dead. Uh, I don't know which signal sure. will be doing it should be okay on any of them. This is just, um, I think, it's like a terminal set that just transfers from the cable to the motor internal wire. Um, so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to, every time it finishes a part, it drops the part onto the conveyor and then it knows that. So then it, the machine puts electricity to the conveyor, turns the conveyor on for a set amount of time, which is set for 45 seconds right now. So this will be powered for 45 seconds. We're trying to use that signal, boom, to activate a plus one counter for the uh, parts catcher. So that after you know one part, two part, 10 part, 50 part, it'll rotate 36 degrees to the next bin. Isn't that funny like with engineering things or uh, trying to invent something, design something, you're like, theoretically, I've got to make it five times harder. Yeah, exactly. And you never try the simplest solution because you're like, well, I, don't, I can't do that. Theoretically, it might um, not work. So. Right, so I might as well do it the hard way. Well I, f I fall into that way. trap all yeah. the time. So yeah, let's see if it works. Let's try it. So uh, now I'm gonna plug in the computer and we will give it a test and see if the switch is working and if this is working. Are you able to run that manually? Yes. Are you? Okay, great. So then we can try that. Okay, my, uh, I'll start up the lathe. So how can you sense uh, the pulse? Um, from the motor? Well, how do you know if it works? So I'm just trying to connect to it here and it's not giving me a good connection. So okay, power bit. should be on. Uh, yeah, on. this thing's lit up. Yeah. So the, the lights are all on down there. Okay. And uh, even without power, it will connect just with USB. We'll give it enough power to run the logic, but not enough power to run the motor. Right. So. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right, we're gonna do a test run. So, go into the settings. Device manager, conveyors, over, down, alter. If I hit alter, how do we know what's happening? It's set to one right now. It's set to one, yeah. So, 
I'm turning it on once, the conveyor should be on. It is. So. Set to only wait five seconds, but this is on 45 seconds, I believe? Yeah. Yeah, I've got it on 45 seconds right now. I can turn it off we again. Also, okay. Okay, it's off. We're not sure if the. Uh, if it's picking it up. So if I hit it again, it, it should do something. So once we do have connectivity with the Arduino and the conveyor turns on, we should be able to see that that sensor went high? Yeah, exactly. It's actually kind of funny because Marcus is working on an Arduino right now and Sky over there is working on a Raspberry Pi on a separate project, which we'll talk about later. Hi everyone, uh, it's Marcus and uh, this is day two on the uh, parts carousel build. So we just did a little bit of calibration and a little bit of coding and, and different programming work and uh, we got it working and, and working with the lathe really well. So um, I guess if we want to take a real quick look at it. So right now it's set at sort of the first bin and the switch there is one parts per bin. So we're going to just hit the go button on the conveyor. So as soon as you hit the go button, uh, you could see on the screen it's got one activation so it sort of records that um, and then it does a countdown so right now the conveyor belt goes on for 45 seconds so we set a 50 second delay uh, so it counts out those 50 seconds and then it sort of ignores all the input in that time because uh, it's an AC motor so it's 60 Hertz and it just goes back and forth uh, basically on the the current here um, and we would get 60 you know parts per second counted um, so to do uh, what we want to do we have to ignore those like constant sort of signals. Uh, and so it's at 40, and as soon as it gets around 50, then it'll switch to the next bin. Uh, so pretty straightforward. And so the way that this sort of started out, um, I talked to John a couple years ago, and I just mentioned I was in the area, and he invited me to his shop, which was really, really nice of him. Uh, so I came out and just sort of, you know, saw what was going on. Uh, and then recently I, you know, basically we, we do this automation work, and so I reached out to John and said, hey, you know, if you have anything that you want to work on, I know there's always stuff going on and you guys are always working on new, new ideas and uh, new sort of little projects like this, let me know. And so he said right away, oh, I've got you know, a bunch of stuff I want to work on. And he laid this out uh, over email and we talked a little bit of back and forth. Um, so we basically, we, we sort of figured out the requirements for the project and you know, it needs to do this and these are the, you know, this is the motor there and I want it to be this size and I sort of blah, blah, blah. Um, and then John had sent me uh, just the bins which he modeled uh, in Fusion 360, so I took those bins, I remodeled them uh, in Inventor, which is what I use, and then you know made the tray and went through and did the you know the structural design of it, and then spec'd out all the electrical components. So it's just an Arduino uh, with a stepper driver on it, uh, and then there is a eight-position rotary switch that's connected to the uh, Arduino itself, uh, and so you can change that the number of parts per bin, uh, which John said he wanted you know one, two, five, ten, twenty-five, fifty, one hundred, and two hundred and fifty. Uh, depending on if you know he's sort of starting out, he could see every single part come out in separate pins, uh, or as the machine warms up and he gets more confident, he could leave it on 100, and then he knows he has batches of 100 coming out in a specific order. Uh, and then it's just tied into the conveyor motor with a small uh, current switch, basically. Uh, fairly inexpensive, and we pass the motor wire through that, um, and we could take a look at that here, actually. So right now, the cover on this is open, but we're going to sort of install it properly. Um, so we've got this wire that's plugged into the current switch here and the current switch is wrapped around one of the motor wires and so every time that motor goes on we get a signal coming off of that uh, clamp switch uh, and like I said so it's sort of we had to mess with a little bit of the code to block out a lot of the signals that we don't want uh, but at this point it works really well as soon as the motor goes on it gets a signal uh, it counts waits for the conveyor to run uh, and then it counts another part in the bin so we were just doing some testing on one part per bin. So every time it does that, uh, you know, we get a, a part and it, it turns. So pretty, uh, pretty simple. And right now we've got the computer plugged in just to do some testing and to do some uh, troubleshooting, I guess. Um, but now that we're done, we can unplug this and leave this thing running all the time. And, and it'll just work as long as the machine's working. So um, that's it. Pretty straightforward and simple little project uh, using an Arduino. and very inexpensive components and for more industrial stuff we would use something like a PLC um, you know if we wanted to get away from 3d printed parts and we could machine all these parts um, but for what it is it works really well and you know to, to the right budget and everything so yeah and that's pretty much it
Um, so if you want to take a look at the article that we wrote uh, about this project, it gets a little bit more into the details um, of the electrical and the mechanical and the code itself, and it actually has the code there uh, for you if you want to take a look. Um, we'll have a link in the video description, uh, so you can check that out on our website. Um, and then if you have any ideas or any sort of projects that you're interested in, just shoot me an email or give me a call. Uh, all that stuff's available on my website as well, and uh, I'd be happy to you know, talk about what you got going on. So. Um, I'm also on Instagram, uh, Marcus Riganelli, and it's Riganelli Automation, so it's R-I-G-A-N-E-L-L-I. -E um, so yeah, I just sort of, you know, I'm starting out, so it's a little bit sparse, but feel free to check it out and let me know if you have anything going on. And uh, a big thanks to, obviously, Grim's Own Eyes for having me and, you know, being able to take on this project with me. It was a lot of fun. I am super excited to get this thing going. Thank awesome. you so much Thank you, John. Thank for you setting it up. Um, was it fun? Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. This is what yeah. I love doing is making stuff like this and yeah. sort of creatively coming up with a solution like this. So, it's so you've started your own, how would you explain it? Like, like who it's are a, you? a small automation company. So I do design yeah. and build of small things just like that. Okay. So uh, basically you sort of get in touch and say, hey, I have an idea for this or I, I yeah. know exactly what I want. Uh, and you know, can you do something like that? And I'll right. give you a quote, an estimate, or whatever. And then I'll go through, design it, uh, build it, and get the parts in, assemble it, test it, blah blah blah, and ship it to you. You can install it. So basically, what we just did is your ideal project. Exactly, ideal project. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing how timing worked out. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm super excited. I got a couple more things in mind for you. Cool. And. Uh, yeah, so what's the name of your company? And uh, it's called Riganelli Automation. Riganelli so, Automation, perfect. So uh, it's uh, Riganelli OCA. R-I-G-A-N-E-L-L-I. Plug. <laughs> Plug. Um, Love and it. And then on Instagram is just Marcus Riganelli. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so I'm just getting started, so it's a little bit sparse. But, uh, Sweet. Local, Canadian, Local, yeah. you know, go-getter, hustler. Go-getter. <laughs> Smart guy. Love it. Um, awesome. And I appreciate you uh, helping me out. And, or, absolutely. You know, being able to work on this. It's yeah, yeah. awesome. So Sweet. I appreciate that. So. All right. Definitely. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, this thing is so cool. We'll, we'll definitely be filming more of this in other like shop life videos and everything. So it's gonna be a, this is gonna be like a staple for this machine now. It should have come with this from the factory. I'm gonna tell Tornos they gotta make this themselves. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited. This is gonna be great. Great. Thanks, All right, John. Thanks, bud. Appreciate it.